Okay, we're at the sink here again, the sink science nine, and we have the Subaru uh, uh, radiator fan motor here, adapted over with the magnetic coupler to the turbine. This is a Subaru fan for a radiator fan. I'm going to take the motor out of that and mount it up to the CD turbine here and see if we can generate power out of this motor. Okay, first thing to do will be to dismantle it from its frame. We won't be needing that, so let me get rid of that. Okay, what I'm left with is this contraption here, which is a motor, and it should act as a generator, according to theory. I haven't tried this yet. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to have to mount that up to a magnetic coupler. A magnetic coupler here. And I don't know if you can see, but I'll bring out the turbine. You can see how it interacts and moves the turbine blades at the same time. Well, we're going to mount that to the little motor here. Okay, we'll just get that screwed on there. Okay, something should happen out of this arrangement. Now I have to mount that on top of the CD turbine somehow to keep it, the magnet separated and make it all work. Well, I've got a piece of uh, six inch polycarbonate tubing, uh, about seven and a quarter inches long, that I've cut a slot into here. That'll fit over the nozzle for the CD turbine. Now we have a support base for the generator. Oops, I stepped on the dog. Sorry about that, Cleo. Yeah, go have a drink of water. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Sorry for that little interruption here. You can see how the magnet uh, hopefully will move with the turbine when the turbine goes around there. Okay, let's take it over to the sink and try a little sink science with it. Really sorry, Cleo. Okay, here we are back at the sink in what has been a very difficult sink science episode here. We've uh, stepped on the dog. We had a hose explode and water all over the place. And we have a leak. <laughs> no! And uh, several other incidents to make it not work. Okay, set up here, uh, we have a Subaru radiator fan motor that's going to be used as a generator. Um, our wires come out of the motor and go to the AA uh, Duracell battery that we hope to charge here. It's currently on the voltmeter at 1.23 volts. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to turn it on, see what we get to start with here. Okay, I'll cut the, uh, you can see the, the generator is rotating with the turbine quite well. Hooking it up now. It's, okay, it's gone up to 1.26, 1.27 volts. And our initial, that's about uh, uh, 5 hundredths of a volt. Uh, what's that, 1 20th of a volt, basically, an uh, increase. It's definitely uh, affected the RPMs of the turbine as well. Starting to charge the battery a little bit already. So we have uh, a few hundreds of a volt going in. Okay, that's good. Let's see what our amperage is going to be. Well, it reads um, about a third of an amp right now. We'll see what happens when I shut off the turbine, whether it goes back to plus. Okay, there we go. Right now there's a draw a draw on the motor from the, uh, or draw on the battery from the motor. The battery is actually trying to turn the motor. And uh, that's 0.8 amps. 
draw you can see how it's actually trying to uh, trying to move the uh, motor a little bit okay so when when we uh, rev it up it'll go into the minus showing that the charge is going in the opposite direction by well, we have about a quarter amp right now 200 and, uh, 260 milliamps 0.26 amps 0.25 so about a quarter of an amp or 250 milliamps charging into the Duracell battery which over a period of time quite a bit of time probably a couple of hours or more it would uh, charge up the battery to a useful level at least we're getting something out of it it's charging from faucet uh, water pressure